week two uh, for Anishinaabe Muin for beginners. Uh, I'm Chelsea and I'll be your instructor. Um, I just want to go over uh, what we did on the last recording or last week. Uh, so we talked about the alphabet, Gaing Wang, Gaing Wang, the Anishinaabe Muin alphabet. So we talked about short vowels. So short vowels means it has a short sound and long vowels have a long sound. So we're just gonna quickly go over these. So A is pronounced uh, as in but, uh. I is pronounced eh, as in bit or pin. O as in o, as in bow or obey. So you can just go over those, say them out loud. And then we did the long vowels. So the double A is pronounced ah, ah, as in shawl or father. The double I is pronounced as an E, as in feet or seen. And the double O is pronounced oo, as in boo, boo. And then the E, which is actually a long vowel because it has a long sound. So it's pronounced A as in bet or cafe. So practice those. Now we went over consonants. I'm not gonna go through them all, but if you watch the last recording, I went through each letter and how it's pronounced. The ones that we wanna focus on the most are the G's, the J's, the S-H and the Z-H. So the J, J, J as in jump. The G as in G. G, goose. So G and J. They're very similar, but you'll get it. So the SH, bush, sh, sh. So you want to make a sh sound, telling someone to be quiet. So the ZH is like the S in measure, measure, zhur, and the, or the J in bonjour, zhur. So practice those. We talked about glottal stops. So the little apostrophe that goes on, uh-oh, uh-oh. So you kind of want to stop the airflow uh, in your vocal cords and get that uh sound. We went over the sound chart and I encourage you to practice this. Um, it's going to be super helpful once you get all these sounds down. So in your spare time, please go over the sound chart. Uh, we watched this video, so if you haven't done that, please go back and watch that. We went over consonant clusters. So, misqua, ish, piming, shi, tiguan, memeng, gua, ma, kwa, and, deg, and, deg, mang, mang. Can't see the last one there. Nininj, nininj. All right, we talked about numbers. So there was also a handout that you guys got. Um, maybe I'll quickly go through numbers one to 10 so you guys can practice your pronunciation. All right, so zero, gawe, ge, go. Gawe, ke go. Gawe, ke go. I'm going to pause and you repeat it. Perfect. Okay, so number one, bejig. 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 Now I'm going to pause and you repeat it. Okay, so number two, niche. Nij, nij. So now you repeat it. Okay, number three. Nis we, nis we, nis we. Good. Now number four. Ni win, ni win, ni win. Five. Na nun, na nun, na nun. Number six, Nagod 
aswe na god aswe na god aswe na god aswe nish waswe nish waswe nish waswe okay number 8 these are very similar nish waswe nish waswe so nish was we and nish was we sham swe sham swe ten ma da swe ma da swe okay so practice your numbers go back to my slides all right also if you didn't watch that video yet go back and watch it so if you want to ask how much or how many of something what you're going to say is anin which is also used for hello and could be used as how so anin ame nick anin ame nick and it's a question so you want to ask it like a question anin ame nick anin ame nick So now you repeat it. Anin amenik. Anin amenik like that. So you're asking how much or how many of something. Uh we talked about nouns, um how they can have uh animate or inanimate gender, which is not really gender, it just kind of means um what kind of um well, I have the slide here. <laughs> uh so the animate we talked about how it's either alive or living has a heartbeat or moves on its own such as ekwe ekwe which is woman or inanimate so if it does not have uh these three things then it is inanimate so an example would be a box so makak makak which is a box um we went over this video the spiritual aspects of the language which was really important in understanding how some nouns uh you know can be confusing such as star mitten and net are actually considered animate in the language and earth shoe water and boat are considered inanimate so best way to do it is to just go to google type in uh, ojibwe people's dictionary come right up um we can search ikwe comes right up and you can also listen to it ikwe and it'll tell you right here if it's animate or inanimate so the na is animate so you just hover over this spot and it'll tell you so that's how how you know for sure if something's animate or inanimate all right so the next thing uh we went over was the kitchen nouns so i'm going to go over these quickly so i'm going to repeat it twice and then i want you to repeat it so the first one is a plate onagen onagen two so i broke it down so knit t wena genans knitty wenaganans nitty wenaganans so that's a cup so nitty wenaganans nitty wenaganans three knife mokoman 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 four is spoon emikwan 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 Five is a fork. Ba, badaka, badaka igan. So it's got the glottal stop. So you want to say badaka igan, badaka igan, badaka igan. All right. Uh, six is salt. Um, one second. Okay. She wetagan. she would tagen she would tagen 
Seven is pepper. We saw God. We saw God. Eight is water. Nebe. Nebe. So you might want to say nibi, but it's actually an I-H sound. Nebe. Nebe. Nine. A uh, kick. A uh, kick. A uh, kick. So that's a tea kettle. And there's also a Kahoot quiz that we will add in uh, to your attachments that you guys can practice. Uh, 10 is a cooking pot. So let's break it down. So it's a j, j as in jump sound and a double I, which is an E sound. So G ba kwe wa kick. G ba kwe wa kick. G ba kwe wa kick. Kick. 11 is a frying pan. Abuewin. 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 12 is bannock. Bakwejigan. 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 13 is partridge. Bene. Bene. So you might want to say bine, but it's it's not pronounced that way. It's pronounced b with the i h sound, ne with the n e h sound. So bene, and you could write it that way to help you. Fourteen wabus, wabus, wabus. Fifteen as a piece of meat, we yas, we yas. Yes. So sixteen is duck. She shib. She shib. She shib. She shib. Seventeen is egg. Wa one. Wa one. Wa one. Eighteen a carton of milk. Do do shabo. Do do shabo. Do do shabo. Um, Nineteen fish uh, is the G sound so g g gi gigun gigun gigun. Twenty open open for potato. Twenty one is carrot o ka duck o ka duck o ka duck. All right. I think we went over this last week as well. So if you want to ask someone to bring you one of these things while you're in the kitchen uh, and you want to say, bring me the plate. So the plate is a inanimate noun. So what you would say is bidun onaganan. Bidun onaganan. Okay. If the noun is animate, you'd say bish. Bish. So if you want to say, bring me the partridge, what you would say is bish bene. Bish bene. And that's a full sentence. Bring me the partridge. So two words, but it's a full sentence. And there's a, um, I think there's a worksheet on this as well that you guys can do. All right. So I don't think we talked about this next week or last week. So um, there's two types of nouns. So the singular and plural. So if there's a singular animate noun like ikwe, which means one woman. And if there's a singular inanimate noun would be one box, makak, makak, one box. There's also a plural version. So if there's a plural more than one woman and it's an Ikwe is an animate noun. What you would say is ikwe wag, ikwe wag. So, and if it's a plural inanimate noun, so more than one box, you'd say makakun, makakun. So when these nouns become plural, they can also show gender. So um, animate words that end in a vowel, like ikwe ends in an e, what you would add is W-A-G or just a G. Um, if it ends in a consonant, 
you'd add AG or OOG. So if it's an inanimate word like macaque and it ends in a consonant, which is a K, you would add N, O-O-N or A-N at the end. If it ends in a vowel and it's inanimate, you might add W-A-N. So the best way to know this is just to look it up in the dictionary as well. Um, maybe I still have equate open, let's see. So if we go here and we scroll down, it'll tell us right here, plural. So it gives us the plural ending for ikwe. So ikwe wag. So we can listen to it too. Ikwe wag. Ikwe wag and practice. So that's a great way to figure out which ending I would need for more than one woman or more than one box. So when in doubt, look it up. That's what I say. All right. So this is actually another, uh, this is going to be your one of your homework assignments. So how to use numbers in verb form. Just let it load. All right. So if you want to ask how many of an animate object there are, what you would say is anin, which is also hello, and is used for how and what sometimes. So anin and das and dasewad. Anin and dasewad. Anin and dasewad. So you repeat it. And you want to ask it like a question. So anin and dasewad. Anin and dasewad. So you're asking how many of an animate object there is. So if you were asking how many and you were pointing to a rabbit, what the person would say is, so the number one is beishig. So in this case, because you're asking how many of it and it's giving you um, an animate verb, you actually have to add an ending onto the numbers as well. So it can be a bit confusing, but um, I'm going to give you the endings for one to four. And this is how it is for each animate verb. So, beshigo. So, beshigo wouldn't change. So, you could say um, there's one partridge. So, what you would say is beshigo bene. So, in this case, you're saying beshigo wabus. So, there's one rabbit, or it means the rabbit is alone has two dual meanings. If you want to say two, uh, there's two uh, two partridges. So waboos doesn't have an ending. So it could, because there's only one. So now you're making it plural. So if you go to our plural animate endings, you would see WAG is an option. So not only do we add it to the noun, but we also add it to the number. So ni shi wag bine wag are two partridges. Oh, okay, so if you want to say there's three fish, so there's more than one fish. So, nisewag gegu yag. So this one actually has a y a g. So the best way to figure out why would it be a y instead of a w? Same thing. Look it up in the dictionary. They'll give you the plural ending for these words. So in this case, it's Y-A-G. Maybe in some dialects, they would drop the Y and it would just be Geguag. But in this particular dialect, it's Geguag. So Nisiwag Geguag. Nisiwag Geguag. So there are three fish. So four. How do you say there's four spoons? So spoon is actually an animate word. So what you would say is newe, which is four, newe wag, because it's animate, eme kwanzug, eme kwanzug. So this, in this case, it's S A G. So newe wag, eme kwanzug. There are four spoons. All right, so if you want to ask how many of something and it's inanimate, what you would say is anin in das inging. Anin in das inging. 
Inning, in the singing. So now you say it. Anin, da singing. And it's a question. So you're asking how many of an inanimate uh, object there is. So if there was one egg, what you would say, um, you'd have the W A N on Beishig. So it's Beishig one, Wa one. So Wa one doesn't have a plural ending, only Beishig one, Wa one. So there is one egg, the egg is alone. So if you want to say two plates, so you'd say Nish, Nishi Nun, Onaganan. So instead of Onagan, which is one plate, you have the plural version, which is Onaganan, has an A-N added to it. So Nishi Nun, so the O-O-N is also indicates the plural for inanimate noun. If you go back to our list, O-O-N was an option. So there are two plates, so three. So how do you say there are three knives? You'd say Nisi Nun, so the O-O-N there, Nisi Nun, Moko Manan, Moko Manan. Nisi Nun, Moko Manan. Nisi Nun, Mokomana. There are three knives. So if you want to say four forks, what you would say is niwi, which is four. Niwi nun, which is an inanimate ending, as these three are all the same. Uh, badaka, badakai ganan. Niwi nun, badakai ganan. Niwi nun, badakai ganan. There are four forks. Okay, so there's a homework uh, assignment that will be attached for you to do about that. And here's a more in-depth um, slide with the plural endings added on to our verbs. So while you're doing the assignment, you could come back to this slide and look. What is the ending for plate if there's more than one plate? Onaganan. Onaganan, so it has an A-N. So if you're wondering, what is the plural for more than one piece of bannock? Say, bakwejiganag, bakwejiganag. So A-G indicates that it's a animate noun. So bannock is actually considered animate. So if you go back to our inanimate, animate uh, slide, A-G was an option, so if you add, if it ends in a consonant, you'd add A-G. So frying pan, abuewinan, abuewinan. So A-N, so that indicates it's what? How, how about you guess what you think it is? So it's inanimate with A-N, okay? So cooking pot. So it has a O-O-G at the end. So what do you think that would indicate? So that actually indicates that that is a animate noun. So if it ends in a consonant and it's animate, then O-O-G was an option. So, so J as in j jump and the double I as in E, G ba kwe wa kick gog. And then there's also something called mass nouns. So if you want to ask how many water, it wouldn't really apply because it would be, you know, this is the kind of the stuff that's in volumes. So you would have to say how many cartons of milk, how many cups of water. So I didn't really include them on this slide, but maybe uh, later on we can discuss how to pluralize mass nouns. All right, so Nana Bojo. So Nana Bojo uh, or Nana Bush is a culture hero, creator and trickster of various indigenous oral histories. He is known by a variety of names and appears prominently in many origin tales. 
Nana Bojo is the embodiment of life with the power to create life in others. In some Anishinaabe and Cree stories, Nana Bojo is a main player in the creation of Turtle Island. In the modern era, Nana Bojo, like other indigenous culture heroes, has proven useful to indigenous peoples seeking a return to traditional approaches to learning and storytelling. Traditional knowledge holders share that Anishinaabe Muin was born and created by Nana Bojo after Gije Manado, Gije Manado, which is the great spirit and giver of life, gave Nana Bojo life, lowered him to the earth, and gave him the responsibility to name everything in existence. So Nana Bojo is also a shapeshifter. He appears as diverse personalities and forms, including a raven, a coyote, and a hare, which represents the various phases and conditions of the life cycle in some indigenous cultures. Known as a trickster, Nana Bojo plays a dual role in indigenous oral histories. On the one hand, he protects and even creates life. On the other, he's associated with mischief and breaking the rules. His adventures and misadventures are meant to teach right from wrong and how to live a good life. Nana Bojo is a seagull, a nighthawk, and a bingo master in this play, Thompson Highway's play, The Red Sisters. In the foreword to this play in particular, Highway describes Nana Bojo as being as pivotal and important a figure in the native world as Christ is in the realm of Christian myth mythology. So we're gonna watch a quick video. On the history behind Nana Bojo, because he does a good, uh, a good explanation of, of it. Another good thing that uh, we notice is that uh, Wenobuju is one of our cultural heroes. And the discussion that we have is that um, you should not use the word buju because it's just a French corruption of the word bonjour. So I thought about that for a long time. Our naming ceremony reflects on how when a Buju first walked the earth and named everything. So uh, <coughs> he named the animals, just so that we can understand in our language, the animals, the birds, in the Anishinaabemowin. So he's the original one. Well, when he left, Since he's a trickster, he was going to come back in some way. And so that story stayed with the people for a long time. That somewhere, somehow, when Abuja was going to come back to the people. But what we don't know is what he's going to look like. Is he going to look like you? Is he going to look like me? Is he going to be an animal? Is he going to be a bird? But he's going to come back to the people. And that's what he told us, he's going to come back. But we don't know what he's going to look like. So that story stayed with the people, and so then what came, what came about as a greeting, the first time you meet somebody for the first time, Ginena Wenabuju, you know, you shake your hand, Ginena Wenabuju, are you Wenabuju? So you don't know what it looks like. So that, so that it became a greeting. Ginena Wenabuju then got shortened to just Buju. So <coughs> really what you're saying is Buju, and, and you can giggle and say, no, I'm not. <laughs> Gotta love that guy. He's funny. All right. So back to my slides. So your homework from last week was to work on your introduction. So I'm just going to quickly go over what we went over. So Hello is Nana Bojo because of Nana Bojo, but it was shortened to Boju because of the French word bonjour. Um, but, but the traditional hello would be Nana Bojo. Nana Bojo. Um, but it's pretty common now that everyone pretty much, you know, says Boju, Boju. Um, and Nin is also a common greeting similar to hi. 
So we also talked about how it could be how or what as well. So anin. And then good morning, we went over mino gejeb. Mino gejeb. Mino gejeb. So gejeb, it means in the morning. So you're not really saying good morning. You're really saying it is a good morning. So just, you know, people know that that's a, a common greeting, but it really doesn't translate well. So just keep that in mind. Then we went over goodbyes. So uh, bama p, which means later. So you could just say bama p, and um, everyone would know what you're saying. You're saying goodbye. But the full um, see you again later would be bama p minwa kawabamin. Bama p minwa kawabamin. So that would mean see you again later. Because minwa means again, and kawabamin means I see you. So when you put them all together, I'll see you again later. But what most people say is bama pi gigawabamin, which is see you. Gigawabamin minwa, see you again. So which translate to until later, see you again. So you don't really want to say goodbye because in the Anishinaabe Muin culture, saying goodbye means, you know, you'll never see that person again. So what you want to say is that you'll see them again later. So, bama pi, bama pi giga wabamin minawa. So you could just say bama pi since we're just beginners and, and they'll understand. All right, so uh, I went over this, but I'm going to pull up the homework that you guys had. So it's the worksheet that says, who are you? And uh, hopefully you completed it. So I completed mine. So I'm gonna read it uh, to you. And then I'm gonna read the additional pieces that you could add into your introduction if you haven't already. Okay, so, so hello everyone. Anin Gakina. Awiya. Anin gakina awiya. So now you repeat it. Anin gakina awiya. So that means hello, everyone. And then if you want to state your English name, so my name's Chelsea. So what you would put, you'd put your name in front. So I would say Chelsea Nadizhnikas. Nadizhnikas. Chelsea Nadizhna Kaz. All right, so I'm happy to see you all. I can't actually see you, but <laughs> if I could see you, I would say Nim Min, Nim Min Wen Dan, Nim Min Wen Dan, Nim Min Wen Dan, Gi Wa Ba Min, Gi Wa Ba Min, Gi Wa Ba Min E Gok, Gi Wa Ba Min E Gok. So Neme when Neme when done Neme when done Giwaba Menegok Neme when done Giwaba Menegok. Okay, so now you try Neme when done Neme when done Giwaba Menegok Giwaba Menegok Giwaba Menegok. So, nime wen dan, kiwaba minagok. I'm happy to see you all. All right, so then, so where I am from blank. So I'm originally from Thunder Bay. So what I would say is Thunder Bay, nindun jaba. Nindun jaba. Nindun jaba. So this is also shortened in some, um, areas so what you might hear is nindunji so thunder bay nindunji means the same thing but the n word anjiba means you know uh, come from a certain place so thunder bay nindunjiba if you want to say where you're living so i currently just moved to pemberton bc so i would say 
So you'd put where you live here. And what I'm going to say is Pemberton in da. In da. So put where you're from or where you live and in da. In da. Um, I don't have a clan personally. Uh, if you are similar to me and you also don't have a clan, this is what you would say. Gawin. Gawin. In da ya wasi. In da ya wasi. Nindo dem. Nindo dem. So all together. Gawin. In de ya wasi. Nindo dem. So I don't have a clan. So if you want to say what your job is. So I work as an outreach coordinator. So you'd put your job here. So my job is, so this is what you would say. You'd put your job first, and then you'd say, Indano Kiwin. Indano Kiwin. So outreach coordinator, Indano Kiwin. All right, so, if, so we could all use this phrase. I am trying to learn to speak the Ojibwe language. So what you would say is, Ni. Nigawe, 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 Ge Ken Dun, Ge Ken Dun, Nigawe, Gin Ken Dun, Je Anishnabe Moin, Je Anishnabe Moin. So all together, Nigawe, Ge Ken Dun, Je Anishnabe Moin. Nigawe ki kendan jiash anishnabe muin. All right. So if you want to say thank you all for listening to me, miigwech, miigwech, bezin, bezin, da, e egg, bezin da e egg, bezin da e egg, miigwech, bezin da e egg. Thank you all for listening to me. All right, so hopefully you guys can practice your introductions, maybe practice on your friends and family members. Maybe if you know any elders, you can practice talking back and forth. Um, and here are some extra pieces you can add. So we talked about everyone. Gakina hawiya, gakina hawiya. So all my relations. So what you would say is, Nin din, nin din, nin din awe, nin din awe ma, nin din awe ma gan, nin din awe ma ganadok, nin din awe ma ganadok, nin din awe ma ganadok, nin din awe ma ganadok. Kind of a mouthful, but if you want to use that, Feel free. Uh, we went over, I don't have a clan. Um, so the only difference between these two is uh, that in, you're both saying ga win. So I, I don't. So ma shi, ma shi, nin, ge ken, e ma si. Oops. Nin, Geken e masi indo dem. So instead of nindo dem, you're saying indo dem. These are very similar. You might even hear gawin in de awasi indo dem. You might even hear that as well. So, so I don't have a clan or I don't know my clan yet. We went over I live in. My job is, so this one, I particularly didn't want to say my age, but if you want to tell someone how old you are, so you would put uh, your age in daso bebon. So you can say, you know, your age in daso bebon. And then there's a few other phrases that you can use down here. Um, so hopefully you guys completed that and you guys can practice on your family members. So the next thing we're going to go over 
is some useful phrases. So I'm going to introduce and say these phrases, and then I want you to repeat them and be practicing them as I'm going. And also there is a homework assignment with these phrases. So uh, these phrases are on the homework assignment, so all you have to do is fill in the blanks. So the first one, let me make it bigger. So the first one is how to say yes. So there's two possible ways to say yes. You could say eh, yeah. So it has the glottal stop. So you kind of want to stop. It's kind of almost, it, it's not a silent A, but you're kind of fading your A at the end. So eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Or you could say eh, eh, eh. So it's kind of nasally. So eh. So either of those mean yes. So if you want to say no, what you would say is gawin, gawin, or you could say ka gawin, ka gawin. If you want to say thank you, miigwech, miigwech. If you want to um, ask someone what their name is, so what you would say is anin. So anin is also used for what? So anin, and let's break it down. So e z h. So ej, ejje, ejneka, ejneka zoyen. There should be a question mark at the end of there. So what you would say is anin ejneka zoyen. Anin ejneka zoyen. So you're asking someone, what is your name? And then they would say what we just learned. Uh, Chelsea Nadijnakas. Nadijnakas. So, where are you from? If you want to ask someone where they're from, there's two possible ways that you can do this in different areas with different dialects. So, ande. So, ande is used for where. So, ande, when, je, yan. Ande, when, je, yan. And it's a question. So, so ande, when, je, yan. Ande, wenjian. So, or you could say, ani pish, ani pish, enje bayan, enje bayan, ani pish, enje bayan. So, both of these mean, where are you from? And you would say, where you're from. So, Thunder Bay, Nindunjaba, or Thunder Bay, Nindunji. If you want to say, me too. You say, Janine, Janine. Uh, sorry, I said that wrong, actually. So it's a G, not a J sound. So it's Genin, Genin. So how about you? So you could either say, Gindash, Gindash, or you could say, Gindashween, Gindashween. So they both mean, how about you? So if you want to ask someone to repeat what they're saying, so say it again. So min wa min wa e ke don min wa e ke don and and it has you kind of want to say it uh, like it has an exclamation mark on it. So min wa e ke don min wa e ke don. So say it again. So please say that again is actually the same words just reversed so what you're going to say is ikadon minawa ikadon minawa so more of a polite way of asking someone to repeat something uh if you want someone to slow down say it slowly so you can understand beka ikadon so say it is is the same word in all these three so that'll help you remember so beka ikadon and, and this has an exclamation mark as well. So what you would say is, because they're going too fast, right? So you want to say, Beka ikadon. Beka ikadon. Beka ikadon. So if you want to ask someone, do you understand? So what you would say is, Gin, ginis, ginise, ginise dotan, 
dotanina, and it's a question. So genese dotanina, genese dotanina. So do you understand? So if you want to tell someone, yes, I understand, you use yes that we learned up here. So eya nen se dotan. Eya. So if these are very similar. So understand. So you're asking someone, do you understand in 13? So there's a G in front because um, we haven't learned personal pronouns, but that's basically why there's a G here and an N here. So here you're talking in the first person and here you're asking, you know, somebody else. So that's why there's different letters there, but they mean the same uh, word uh, to understand. So ella nene se dotan. Ella nene se dotan. Okay, and then the last one. I can't see the bottom of my screen. The last one, <clears throat> I do not understand. So you'd use uh, the word for no. So gawin, gawin, nene, neneze, neneze do tanzin, neneze do tanzin, gawin, neneze do tanzin. So you could use that one a lot. I, I don't understand. <laughs> It'll be helpful. All right, so, and I have this on the slides as well, so you can practice your memorization. And uh, yeah, we're gonna move on to our next topic. So uh, there's gonna be a, uh, not a worksheet, but a basically a Microsoft Word printout of these imperatives. So, so you could either use the slides or you can use the printout. Um, so they're there for you in detail. So I'm going to go over these. So an imperative means um, it's a command. So you're telling someone what to do. So if you want to tell someone to come in, what you would say is, and I broke it down here on the right. So you'd say, bean de gin. Bean de gin. Bin de gin. And it's an exclamation mark. So you want to say, bend again. So come in. So come on in. Welcome. Come inside. Bend again. Bend again. Okay, if you want to tell someone to sit down, you'd say, nama, namada bin. Namada bin. Namada bin. Namada bin. So sit down. Uh, if you want to tell someone to stand up, you'd say ni, ni ba, ni ba win, ni ba win. So stand up, ni ba win, ni ba win. So if you want to ask someone to come here, so instead of, you know, come on inside, it's more like come here, come here. So you'd say bi, bish, bijan. Bijan, Bijan, Bijan. And I hope you're saying all these. I want you to be saying them out loud. It's okay. I'm not judging you if you're yelling <laughs> at your computer. Okay. If you want to tell someone to go away or leave, you're going to say, Ma, Ma John. Ma John. Ma John. Ma John. Go away. So if you want to tell someone to build a fire, what you would say is bo, bo da, bo da win, bo da win. <clears throat> so bo da win, bo da win, bo da win, build a fire. If you want to tell someone to go home, you'd say gi, gi win, gi win, gi win. He went, go home. So if you want to say, tell someone to sing. So what you would say is na, naga, nagamon, 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 nagamon. So sing. If you want to tell someone or 
your kids or whoever, go to sleep. You'd say, ne. So that's an I-H sound because it's not a double I. So you say, ne, ne ban, ne ban. So, ne ban, go to sleep. Ne ban, ne ban. Um, if you want to tell someone to get up, what you would say is, wa, wa ne, wa ne shkan. Wanishkan. Wanishkan. Get up. Wanishkan. 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 Okay, cool. So I'm going to switch really quickly to a presenter view. And I'm going to ask you guys some questions. And I want you to guess uh, what I'm saying. Oops. All right, so out of these pictures, what do you guys think that I'm saying? Nagamon. 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 Three, two, one. So I was saying sing, sing, Nagamon. Okay, so what do you guys think this is? Wanish Khan. Wanish Khan. Wanish Khan. So three, two, one. I was saying, get up, like wake up, get up. All right, what about this one? Niban, Niban. So three, two, one. Go to sleep, go to sleep, Niban. So good job if you got any of those right. You're listening. All right, so next, Ma John. Ma John. Maybe if I do a gesture. Ma John. So three, two, one. So I was saying go away or leave. So next one, Bijan. Bijan. So three, two, one. So I was saying come here. So I use the little dog's picture. Come here. You can use that for your dogs. Be Sean. Okay, so the next one, gi wen. Gi wen. So three, two, one. I'm saying, go home. Go home. Gi wen. All right, so last one, niba wen. Niba wen. Niba wen. So three, two, one. I was saying, stand up, stand up, Niba win. All right, so we talked a little bit about single, singular and plural and how you can add endings. So for this particular, uh, for imperative words, so if you want to tell more than one person what to do. So it's basically the same word, except you're going to add Y O K to the end. And this is, you can just add this Y OK and instantly you're talking, you can talk to a whole room of people. So instead of telling one person what to do, you can tell multiple people what to do. Okay, so come in. Bin, bindege, bindege, yok, bindege, yok, bindege, yok. Many people come in. Bindege, yok, bindege, yok. So telling many people to sit down. Nama, nama da be, nama da be yok, nama da be yok, nama da be yok, nama da be yok. So, um, if you want to tell multiple people to stand up, ni, ni ba, ni ba we, ni ba we yok. Nibawayok. 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 If you want to tell multiple people to come here, come on in. B. Bija. Bija yok. Bija yok. Bija yok. Bija yok. If you want to tell multiple people to go away or leave, 
Maja. Maja yuk. Maja yuk. Maja yuk. You can get angry. Maja yuk. Go away. If you want to tell multiple people to build a fire. Boda. Boda we. Boda we yuk. Boda we yuk. Boda we yuk. Boda we yuk. So if you want to tell multiple people to go home. So this is a little different than to go away, to actually go home. Gi, gi we, gi we yok, gi we yok, gi we yok, gi we yok. Um, if you want to ask multiple, well, not ask, tell multiple people to sing. Na, naga mo, naga mo yok, naga mo yok, naga mo yok. If you want to tell multiple people or children to go to sleep, ne, ne ba, ne ba yok, ne ba yok, ne ba yok, ne ba yok. Uh, if you want to tell multiple people to get up, wa ne, wa ne shka, wa ne shka yok, wa ne shka yok, wa ne shka yok. Good job. All right, so another little guessing game. So, what am I saying? Ni ba yok. Ni ba yok. Ni ba yok. So, three, two, one. I was saying, go to sleep. So, multiple people go to sleep. Ni ba yok. Next one. Boda way yuk. Boda way yuk. Boda way yuk. So three, two, one. Build a fire. So multiple people build a fire. Boda way yuk. All right. So we're going to learn some more nouns. So we're going to go over table. And there's also a Kahoot quiz. Um, that we can add as an attachment that you guys can practice learning your nouns. So table, a do po win, a do po win, a do po win, a do po win. So chair, a pa, a pa be, a pa be win, a pa be win. A pabewin. A pabewin. Okay, window. So wa se, wa se che, wa se che gun, wa se che gun, wa se che gun, wa se che gun. So that's window. So bed. Ni ba. Nibagan, 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 Nibagan. Okay, door. Ish, Ish quand, Ish quandem, Ish quandem, Ish quandem, Ish quandem. A uh, house, Waka, and we got a Glottal stop here. So waka igan. Waka igan. Waka igan. Waka igan. Waka igan. Tipi. So bajish. Bajishka. Bajishka. And we got another glottal stop. Ogan. Ogan. Bajishkaugan. 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 So stove. So G as in goose. G, G. G. So that's an I. So I H. So G. G. Geja. Geja. Beke. G. 
Kejabe Keze Kejabe Keje Gun 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 It's hard, it's a difficult word, <laughs> but that's why we slow it down. Kejabe Keje Gun all right so tent so weg weg wam weg wam weg wam okay so there's two words for airplane so the first one so these could be used in different areas um but they both mean airplane so be be meze so and the other one is om omba omba sin and there's a glottal stop there so it's almost like a not a silent n but you know stop your n as it's coming out so omba sin omba sin omba sin so Bemezemagak, Bemezemagak, and Ombasen, Ombasen. All right, so this is a boat or canoe. So, G, G man, G man, G man. Car, Odaban, Odaban, Odaban. All right, good job. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is VAIs. So VAIs are intransitive verbs. So this can describe what the activity is, what the state is, and describes what the condition is. And all of these verbs that I'm about to show you are full complete sentences. So for example, anoki, Anoki, anoki means he or she is working. So one word is a full sentence. That means he or she is working. Anoki. So we're gonna learn some verbs. All right, so the first one is he or she is full. So debe, debe se. Debesene, 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 debesene. So that means he or she is full. Okay, at the top right corner, he or she is sleeping. Neba, neba, neba. So he or she is sleeping. Okay, and then he or she is sick on the left hand side. So a a ko a koze a koze a koze a koze. So that means he or she is sick. Um, the next one, he or she is cooking. So g g ba g ba kwe g ba kwe. Chibakwe. 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 So that's he or she is cooking. The next one, he or she is singing. Naga. Nagamo. 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 Okay, the next one, he or she is dancing. Nimi. Name, name. The next one, he or she is building a fire. Boda, boda we, boda we, boda we, boda we. Okay, the next one in the bottom left corner, he or she is uh, going home. Gi we. Giwe. Giwe. 
So here she's going home. Next one, he or she is playing. He or she's playing. One moment. Oda meno. Oda meno. Oda meno. Oda meno. Oda meno. So he or she is working. Anoki. Anoki. He or she is angry. Nishka. Nishka deze. Nishka deze. Nishka deze. And then the last one, he or she is eating. We sene. We sene. We sene. We sene. We sene. Awesome. And I have this slide that's blank at the end of this uh, PowerPoint, so you will be able to practice your memorization. All right, so if you want to ask someone what they are doing and they're working, so what you would say is anin. So as we said, this could be used as what, how, or hello, or hi. So anin, endo, endo dang. Endo dung. So anin, endo dung, because you're asking a question, right? So anin, endo dung. Anin, endo dung. So what is he or she doing? And the end word do da means to do something. So that's where that uh, word comes from. So if you want to say, uh, what is what is he or she doing and they're working? So you would say anin, endo dung. Anin and Odang. And the person would say, Anoki, Anoki, he or she is working. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to watch this video. And she's going to, this uh, woman named Barbara Nolan is going to teach us about the months and days of the year. And then uh, on the next slide is, um, I, I wrote it out for you. So you won't have to take notes. Uh, you can just listen to the video and you can come back to this slide and copy it or print screen it and use this as your guide. Let's go ahead and watch this video. Abujo, Nangotish Minon, Nidbatan, Manda, Eje, Gopun Gak, Gopun, Mabagi, Sum Zinig, and Jinkaza Maba. So today we're going to talk about the year, and what I call this is Gisum Zinigan, which is um, month a month book, or a, a sun book, or if you want to go more specific, the big geese is Mzinega. So that would be um, the moon calendar. And Nishnabe, Nishnabe, we always had 13 moons. We went by the 13 moons, but until the settlers came, and brought a new way of looking at time that we got into calendars and months and weeks and so on. So I'm just going to tell you what I know of the, the year and the months. So this would be one month. Ngogiesis. Those of you who have learned how to count, Bejik, Nish, Swe, Niw, and Nanan, okay, you don't say Bejik, Gizes. You say Ngo, Gizes. One month. That means, and it's all um, common sense actually, the moon, now let me see, does the moon go around the sun? 
No, the moon goes around the earth once. Good thing, once. So you take the first part of that word, go, and then you put Jesus, one month, go Jesus. So if you're going to say two months, Maba, we know Maba, Nish Jesus. Go Jesus, Nish Jesus. Mandagash kena miwe ngo bon. One, so the uh, earth travels around the sun in one year, I think. Now, I don't know my science, but to me, that's how it goes. <laughs> so, so one year it takes, eh, to travel around. So ngo bon, one winter is actually what you're saying, because babon is winter. Ngo babon, one year. Ngo bon, one month. Ngo gizes, ngo gizes. Two years, nijob bon, nijob bon. That mean like two winters. So however old you are, you would say the number and you would say babon at the end. Babon gis, actually. Uh, say if you're 50. Non mitna, then sabon gis. So I am 50 years around the sun. So we're going to take a look at some of the words associated with the months of the year in our language, in our Anishinaabe language. And over here, I'm going to refer to this chart. Months of the year depend on the location and the weather or the season. What it happens during that season is how the months are known, or how, yeah, the, how the months are known. So in um, January, we call it Menedogesis, which is a spirit moon. In January, which is supposed to be the coldest month of the year, between January, maybe December starting, eh? Menedogis is spirit moon. And in January, you'll kind of hear the spirits, like you'll hear your house crack because it's so cold. When you go outside, you can hear the trees even cracking. So that's cold around us, eh? And cold is a spirit. So January is known as spirit moon. February, February, is known as makwa gizis. And makwa gizis means bear moon. And so it is known in February, around the middle of February, towards the end of February, the bears are starting to stir in the den. They're going to give birth very shortly. They might, I think they have already, and usually they say it's the very first foggy morning in February, that's when the babies are, are the little bears are born, the cubs. So Makwagesis, February, Makwagesis. March, Nabdin Gesis, Nabdin is the snow crust moon. So what happens in March is sometimes we have a uh, rain and then it gets cold. So the snow gets crusty on the top. So that's uh, how you say that in the language. It's anabdin. You can actually walk if you're not as heavy as I am. You can actually, like the kids could actually walk on top. I remember walking on top of the snow and the snow would be like really, really deep. But you wouldn't fall through because it's crusty on the top. So you're able to walk on top. So that's Nabdin Gisis, snow crust moon. 
And then we go into April, and April is called as Bopogmegesis, Broken Snowshoe Moon. Oh, that's in March or April, but I think it's April. Bopogmegesis. Because if you continue to snowshoe uh, into uh, April, because of that crusty moon before in March, it's crusty, it's going to damage your snowshoes. And then the more snowshoe walking you do, the more damage your snowshoes get. So, and it's at the end of the winter, you've been snowshoeing since uh, December, and then your snowshoes are starting to wear out. So by April, it's broken snowshoe moon. <clears throat> That's one. And then in some other places, uh, April is referred to as Sisbok the Kegesis. Sisbok the Kegesis is an, uh, another um, word that we know as April. It's sugar moon. Okay, it's a time to make maple syrup. Some people also call it Ziguan. Ziguan Gisis. And that means that the sap is starting to run. And, and actually, it's already run. It starts running in February, actually. Some places are already starting their um, collection of sap and uh, already boiling it. So in April, then, they're making the sugar, the maple sugar. So it's sugar moon. sees back the kegesis in April. Then in May, we have Nemebnegesis, which means sucker moon. So in April, early April, we have the suckers are running in the streams. Uh, some people like to eat them. We used to eat the, the heads, the sucker heads. They were delicious. When I was young, they were good, and especially the eyeballs. Um, and then we have June, and June is called Wabugonigisis, which means blossom moon, blossom moon in June. So you know, in June, all the flowers are starting to blossom. So actually, all the months, eh, it depends on the weather and the season, what is happening, and everything is around that. July is mean geeses, which is berry moon. So berries are plentiful, although we have strawberries, uh, they bloom in June and, and July, they're practically all gone. But then we have our raspberries, our blueberries are getting to be plentiful at that time. So it's mean geeses, berry moon in July. Then we come to August. And August is known as Menominegesis. Menominegesis is uh, rice, the rising moon. So I think it's towards, mainly towards the end of August. That's when the rising starts in places where rice grows. And then in September, all of you know what happens in September? The leaves start to change color. So it's wabagagesis. So wabaga, uh, the, the green leaves start to change color. They turn yellow, they turn uh, red, some of them. Okay, so the changing leaves moon, wabagagesis for September. Then we go into October, and October is Banaquigesis. Banaquigesis, and those leaves that have changed color are now falling off the trees. Banaquigesis. So it's falling leaves moon. And then we go into November. November is Pshkakwadengesis. Now, for some reason, person, we forgot to write what that means. So, Pshkakudengesis is uh, 
is starting to freeze the the ponds all those types of things they're starting to freeze okay it's starting to freeze moon so it's getting kind of cold and things are starting to freeze and then in december we have minidogi sons so that means small spirit or little spirit moon so and that's when um, our little spirits are starting to come around and tell us that hey winter is here you know we're going to get bigger so they kind of they start off small so so when you think um think of all like what happens in each of these moons or months what happens during that month is usually what that month is called some areas are different Th these one are mainly around in this location um uh, earlier i mentioned or maybe i didn't <clears throat> The days of the week, uh, we have two versions, or maybe even three versions, uh, to identify the days of the week. And because of the Jesuits that came and, and uh, worked with our people, and um, through colonization, we've been um, deemed towards Christianity and whatnot. So some of these words in the days of the week are reflective of that. So let me just, first of all, let's start with the Nishnabe people had seven days. And I'm going to just show you. Let me just show you. I'm just thinking about it right now as I'm speaking. But if this is good information to know. Nishnabe people, we had our own days of the week. This is what it looked like. So we had Nangwa. Now. Now or today. Okay. That's one day. We had Jinagwa, which means yesterday. Okay? Then we had from now, okay, everything stems from now. We had Osnagwa. Okay? So there's your three days. And then we had even another day from there. We had Chere, Che Osnava. So we have today. And from today, we have three days behind us. Okay, we have. Jinagwa, Osnagwa, and Kche Osnagwa. So yesterday, the day before yesterday, and the day before, the day before yesterday. Now we go the other way. We're going to go Wabang tomorrow. Wabang. From today, then we go Oswabam. Oswabam. And then we have Kche Oswabam. Whoops, there's two A's there. So this was our traditional seven days of the week. We never had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This was our seven days of the week. Okay? So let me go over it again. 
And let's just look at a calendar here. Okay? And just to give you an example, let's go right to March. Is this March? Yes. So March, we have, let's, let's say it's uh, the 8th, just for example. So that would be Nungwa. Nungwa. Chinagwa, yesterday. Osnagwa, day before yesterday. And Chosnawa, day before the day before yesterday. That's three days behind you. And then Nangwa and Wabang tomorrow. Oswabang day after tomorrow. And Oswabang is the day after the day after tomorrow. So there's your seven days of the week. The old way. But we've been conditioned to either follow what uh, we say as uh, through the church, eh? So, Namegijgat is Sunday, which is pray day. Namegijgat is like holy day. Shkwa Namegijgat, okay? So we have Shkwa Namegijgat, Monday is after pray day. That's the definition, after pray day. Then we have Nishgishgat, so that's the second day. And then Wednesday is called as half a day, or half day, or half of the weekday, is Apta Gishgat. Some say Aptwise, so it's half the week, eh? And then Thursday, Spinaganwan, Thursday, and it's referring to Holy Thursday, which is cons consecration day. Okay, like Holy Thursday is when they had the Last Supper and uh, Jesus lifts the chalice up. So those of you who are still Christian will relate to that. Then we have Jibatogishgat, which is Friday or Cross Day. So in, in that, uh, in religious terms, again, refers to on Friday um, when uh, Jesus was nailed to the cross. It refers to Holy Friday or Good Friday. And then Mani Gishgat is Saturday, and that's Mary's Day. So whatever, and Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, her day was celebrated on a Saturday. And then, okay, and also Wednesday sometimes is referred to as Josep Gishgat, which is Joseph's day. So this here, some people still follow that, and there's nothing wrong with that. And we have to respect everybody's beliefs. It, it is not up to us to judge what other people follow, what their beliefs follow. So... Those are the days that reflect on Christianity days. And then we have these days here. Um, we can say a Namegishgat, which is pray day. Nitamgishgat uh, is first day. Some have numerized the days, eh? Nishgishgat is second day, which refers to Tuesday. Nesuegishgat, uh, which is Wednesday, third day. And then Aptwing is half. And then we have Nanangishgat, which is the fifth day, or Jibatugishgat up here, right? which is Friday. And then we have Ngudosugishgat, which is the sixth day. So some people choose not to go by the Christian way of naming the days of the week. They choose to do this here part. And it's a choice that people have. Um, okay, so let's go here again. Over here we have 
Ngugishek would be one day. Ngodemegishek is one week. Ngodemegishek, one week. So two weeks, Nijunemegishek. So if we had a client say, I like to make an appointment, um, and then you as the worker would look in your calendar and you would say, you come in two weeks' time, and I'll give you an appointment date for that. So, and so is three weeks, and then is one month. So, you wouldn't say because it's no sense to say that because you're referring to one month. So, that's all I have to say about that. Naha, mama. All right. So I didn't show you that video so that you would, uh, you know, have to memorize all the months and the days. And um, it was more f so that you would uh, understand how much uh, of a Western impact that uh, um, is just on a like it's just taken over the Anishinaabe worldview and how they actually have uh 13 months of the year and I just thought it was really interesting and I was thinking while I was watching that that maybe um you could even just write the Anishinaabe Moen word for January on your calendar you could write uh, the word for Monday for Tuesday for Wednesday on your calendar so you remember what you learned and also I wanted to remind you that you could also do that with the nouns we learned. So for adopoin, you could put a post-it on your table with adopoin. You could put a post-it on your chair with abapuin. You could put a post-it on your bed uh, so that you remember all these nouns that we learned uh, as you're interacting with uh, your stove and your door all, like uh, throughout your day and you remember what you learned. So. I think I'm going to end it there. Um, there's a few homework uh, things that you can do and then don't worry about uh, the answers as I'll go over them in the next recording. So I think there's a, uh, I'll just pull up the assignments real quick for this week. So there's this one, what's on the kitchen table activity plural forms. So you're going to put bish or bidun, should be two ends there, or two o's, bidun uh, in front, and then you're going to add the plural ending. So you could look at the slides or look them up on the dictionary, which is right here, uh, to add the proper ending for, is it an animate uh, noun or inanimate? And then I'll go over the answers uh, next time. There's this one. So the new phrases that we learned, you're gonna fill in the blanks. So Mary, and then you're gonna write, um, you're gonna find the missing word. So I'm gonna give you the first answer, Mary Nadizhnikaz, all right? So you'd write here, my name is Mary in, in this section, all right? Um, maybe go over your numbers a little bit. Don't worry about anything past 20. So as long as you know zero to 10, I'm happy with that. Uh, you can go over your intro with your family and friends, practice it. And also there is a assignment called how to use numbers in verb form. So I'll go over the answers um, next time. So try your best and uh, yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, Bama P.